Welcome to a video from TheDigitalLifestyle.com In this video I'm going to show you how you can use Hyper-V to run old versions of Windows um, particularly 32-64-bit versions of Windows so if you fancy running um, Vista, XP or going back like here I'm running Longhorn or even older right back to NT351 you can actually get these working in Hyper-V with just a few uh, tweaks and settings uh, so the first thing you've got to do is make sure you've got Hyper-V uh, up and running um, you can actually turn that on and off through Windows features. You need to have Windows uh, 10 Professional or Enterprise to have this, but I'll show you where the setting is. Here you see the setting. I've just uh, turned on Windows features. You can just search for that for the Start menu, and um, you make sure you've got these two box boxes on. So once you've done that, enabled that, rebooted, then your Hyper-V bit is ready to run. And so the next step is actually creating your virtual machines. Okay, so let's create a virtual machine and we'll give this a test. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, use Windows 2000. I've got a Windows 2000 ISO file which I'll use. And there's a few steps we've got to take. Most of it's pretty much standard Hyper-V server. The first thing you've got to do is for the older operating systems, certainly 2000, NT4, NT351, and I can't remember, I think maybe XP as well, is you can't, you can't use dynamically uh, create, um, dynamically creating hard drives. You've got to use uh, fixed hard drive size. So you want to go and create a new hard disk of a fixed, uh, of a VHD. So you want VHD and give it a fixed size of 2 gig limit for, especially for NT4 or 2000. So make sure you set those. If you've got... Um, larger drives then they just i've seen those those crashing so that's that's my advice for the older operators once you get to the newer ones obviously you don't need to borrow that so i'm going to create a, a two gig fixed drive to support my 2000 install right so let's create a new machine now create a new virtual machine i'm going to call it uh windows 2000 uh, make sure you use generation one. You don't want to use generation two. Obviously, you're using old technology with these operating systems. Dynamic RAM I found doesn't work, and it's better to take that off as well for um, like NT351, uh, 2000, NT4. You can really limit the amount of uh, memory you've got in there. So I use one or two for that. Should be fine. Uh, you don't need a network adapter. We'll uh, give it a legacy one later. And now you use your hard disk. So I'm going to use my existing one that I created. So there's my fixed hard drive. And we can finish that. So the thing now we need to do is the legacy network adapter. So what you've got to do is take off the old uh, network adapter. So I can remove that from there and add the legacy network adapter. Okay, one final thing you've got to do, you need PowerShell for this. Here in PowerShell, you've got to use this command, admin PowerShell. Set VM processor, the virtual machine name, and the compatibility for older operating systems enabled. True. So you need to make sure you've got those uh, working as well. Uh, enter on that. That's done. And that's it. Now we can try firing it up. Now, one other thing we need to do, obviously, is to give it the boot media. Um, which I didn't do before so my first job now is to tell you which device or what we're booting from so I'm going to browse for uh, we're going to boot from an ISO that I've got okay so there's I've given it the uh, Windows 2000 ISO that should be okay so let's start this up now, now I think what it's going to do now is if this was XP or Vista or Windows 7 or anything that was from XP really this would work first time I've ever seem to remember from 2004 it crashes because of the kernel is not the right kernel for um, for this Hyper-V like that so what I have to do was you have to go into do F5 while it's doing its startup and you can choose a different kernel a different HAL I think it was just standard PC I did. Okay, there we are. So we're at the setup screen now, um, and I can run through this exactly as, as you would have done back in 2000 when you installed it. So I'll finish this off, and 
we'll see get windows to start windows 2000 startup and we'll just have a recap and see what you've got to do for other operating systems okay here we have the finished windows 2000 already set up um, it grabs the screen the mouse cursor as well as you've got to do the control left arrow to let it release but if that's going to work i can just flick through that now and that'll work and we've even got um an internet connection as well so we know that because we give it that legacy network card we'll have to find your serial number um but there's many sites have got all those kind of things but this it shows how you can install 2000 you can install right back nt351 all the way up to current windows 10 uh, and beyond on there i've had um all different operating systems on here i've even had some that uh, like NT4, and I've had some beta ones that uh, never made it in the light of daylight. Like Neptune, and in fact, I've got a video on the justlifestyle.com. You can see where I did Windows uh, NT351 and upgraded it to NT4, to 2000, to XP, to Vista, to Windows 7, and all the way up to Windows 10 as well. So, have a look at that. So, hopefully, that helps you get in uh, old operating systems running on Hyper-V. If you've got any questions, you can email me in at thislifestyle.com and at iStixon on Twitter.